Throughout the month of August, multiple people within the competitive fighting game community have stepped forward to share their stories of inappropriate sexual comments by Skullgirls lead designer Mike Zaymont. Skullgirls is of course a very popular one-on-one -on -one fighting game featuring very scantily dressed animated ladies and was heavily funded by crowdfunding. Since then, it's built up a bit of a dedicated following with conventions and plenty of online tournaments, and Mike Zaymont has been front and centre. However, with so many claims made against him, several members of the team have publicly left the company, leaving quite a big hole, which was incredibly hard to fill. And due to these alleged actions in relation, Mike has fired all remaining staff. The anonymous ex-members of staff have told Kotaku this was due to the mass leavings, inappropriate behaviour from Mike and of course the trouble the company was going through because of stuff like this. Mike himself had this to say. Unfortunately Lab Zero was forced into layoffs because we were no longer able to meet our payroll obligations. It is not a decision I made lightly, I personally know how hard it can be to find enjoyment in a poorly performing economy, but we have more debt than cash. And the last thing I would ever do is not pay my hard working colleagues or our partners for their work. We are exploring all funding options in hopes of bringing those team members back, but right now, that's the reality. It's still unclear as to what the severance agreements actually are. On August the 9th, the fairly popular Kickstarter Levitate Hangers posted a rather confusing update. Basically, these, to be fair, pretty impressive hangers that make it easier for people to hang up pictures and tablets, apparently, started running into a few troubles. And to combat this, Moshi, the campaign owner, decided he was going to create a second campaign to help fund this one. However, Kickstarter put a stop to that straight away, which is actually a good thing. How can someone focus on two projects at once? Kickstarter simply does not allow for a second project to go live whilst the first is still incomplete. Which brings us to that particular update. Moshi decided to mark everybody's rewards as fulfilled and basically try and explain this crazy idea to his backers. And, you know, as expected, he didn't get away with it. I mean, of course he didn't get away with it. It's a stupid idea. Whether Kickstarter sussed this out themselves or the backers complained to Kickstarter themselves, it doesn't matter because Moshi blamed his backers anyway. This then resulted in him basically telling his backers to put down even more money to help keep the campaign afloat, some of which are for some reason doing that exact thing. And others... Well, others, of course, are making their way to my Discord and updating me on the stupidness that is this campaign. <laughs> but don't worry, because he does have one final plan. And that plan is yet another campaign, which will soon be released on Indiegogo. And I'm sure that it will be a swimming success. <sighs> Enough of Trump was the campaign that got launched on August the 10th. And as you may have guessed... It's for all those people that don't want Trump to get another four years. We're working to get Trump out of office by placing artist-designed billboards in swing states. And for those not in America, a swing state is essentially a state in America that Trump got the majority vote in when he won the election. Whether you agree with this or not, the campaign is actually doing brilliantly financially. And as it comes to an end, expect to see a big jump in pledges. And of course, if these billboards do go up in pro-Trump states, expect to see some pretty serious graffiti charges too. Yes, guys, welcome to Kickscammer News for the month of August 2020. This is my monthly roundup news show where I look at all of the good and all of the bad on places like Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and of course, GoFundMe. Now, to start this episode off, we've obviously gone down a bit of a political route. I can't help that. That's just the way the news has been this last month. Uh, but moving forward, don't worry, out of the 17 campaigns you're about to hear, only one more of them is a political type campaign and you know exactly what one that is. <sighs> but anyway, before we get into that, a quick word from our sponsor. Oh, 
Oh, okay. Uh, yes, so there is many kinds of hair loss out there, guys. And you may be surprised that two out of three gentlemen that watch my channel, 132,000 subscribers, will already have male pattern baldness. Yes, yeah, so out of those 132,000 subscribers, that tells me that 30,590 of them, yep, yeah, they've already got the baldness. And another 44,968 are well on their way. So, again, according to my research, that's the entire equivalent of Luxembourg. All of you guys need to be clicking that link down below in the description before it's too late. No more going to the doctor's office for your hair loss prescription because thanks to Keeps, you can speak to a doctor online and get medication directly to your door. No more slapping on face masks to go queue up in the pharmacy. This is your chance to get one of only two FDA approved hair loss products that are out there delivered every three months at a price that will surprise you. Oh my God! Come <laughs> on mate, keep your hair on. I know. Prevention is the key here, guys. So if you are noticing that you may be losing your hair, get it sorted right now with DJ Slope's limited time offer. Go on, go to keeps.com forward slash DJ Slope or click that link down in the description to receive 50% off your first order. Thanks to Keeps for sponsoring the show and thanks to you guys for listening. But for now, let's get on with, with the show. Build a wall. Yes, you knew I was going to be bringing this one up, didn't you? Well, actually, I'm not talking about that wall. I'm actually talking about a wall that one campaign owner wants to go up in the channel tunnels between Dover and Calais. <sighs> so the idea of this campaign is to raise £10,000 in order to put sticky ball things in the water, similar to those floaty lines that you get in swimming pool lanes, so that if a boat does go across, it would get stuck to these balls and then it can get towed back. Now, obviously, this campaign is a massive joke. It's got to be. The guy who's running it did his research in a bathtub with kids' toys, and, well, it's just simply a stupid idea, isn't it? But still, it has gained over £2,500 from backers that, dare I say it, are a little bit simple. Thankfully, he has stated that if for whatever reason he is unable to go out and put his swimming lane balls in the English Channel, he will donate the money to a local cause that makes hot meals and provides entertainment for children from vulnerable families, being run by his local pub. Which, you know, let's be honest, is what this campaign is actually for. And of course, August the 11th was the day that TikTok employee Action made its way onto GoFundMe with a goal of $30,000. Its aim is to raise the money needed to fill an injunction against the White House's recent executive order that will prohibit any employees of TikTok to receive pay. Any transactions by any person or with respect to any property subject to the jurisdiction of the United States with ByteDance Limited in Beijing, China or its subsidiaries in which any such company has any interest as identified by the Security of Commerce under Section 1 of this order. Basically, what that means is that this order essentially is going to be stopping 1,500 American citizens that are working for TikTok to not get any form of payment due to the parent company. The campaign has almost hit its goal and already has got some pretty impressive numbers supporting it and it is very close to hitting its target. August the 11th. <sighs> okay, so unfortunately I've actually got to start this segment off with a follow-up to the American Office spin-off, Uncle Stan. Even though I'm personally not a big fan of the Stanley The Office spin-off that brings him out of retirement, it turns out that 1,640 backers want this to go ahead as it's gained a rather hefty $336,450. Now, unfortunately, that's not the big news off the back of this project, but instead, the lead actor, Leslie Baker, has shown proof of some horrific, like some of the worst I've ever seen, racist remarks against him during this campaign's life. Nothing much else to really add to this except that it sucks. I really do wish the best for this project. My hope is that these disgusting people leave them alone from here on out and actually get themselves educated. And of course, let's hope that the campaign is a success. 
Okay, on to something a lot more upbeat and topical to this channel, the incredible Doug Tenaple, who created these incredible comics, the guy who made Earthworm Jim, is back again to do it all again. Yes, I was a backer of the original Earthworm Jim graphic novel, and you can be damn sure I'll be doing the same this time round too. Earthworm Jim Fight the Fish is the next chapter in the Earthworm Jim storyline from the creator himself, and this time Jim goes down the tube. Seriously. I cannot suggest this project anymore, as the quality of these books are absolutely exceptional. Probably the best I own in all of my graphic novels, and I mean, come on, for any fan of Earthworm Jim, this is kind of a no-brainer. Trying to get these massive books after these campaigns are finished is rather difficult, so I highly suggest checking this campaign out. This is an absolute must for any Earthworm Jim fans. A rather ingenious VR game got funded on the 13th, and as an adopter of VR myself, I want to see more games like this, VR Giants. The idea is for the VR player to control a giant, which will change the scenery sometimes, and other times simply put out a helping hand whilst another controller moves a character in a typical 3D platforming style, and you need to work together to complete your goals, and honestly, this is one of the better examples I've seen of turning a VR experience into a cooperative 2D experience. Something that, you know, VR players simply don't have. It really is as simple as that. Kind of like playing some of the modes on those Astro Bot PSVR games, but in a two-player local co-op mode. It's a very cool idea, and a project that I really hope does do rather well for itself. Also, on the 13th of August, one chap by the name of Dave Nightingale set up a GoFundMe called Ocean Beach Drink. The intention of this campaign was to earn only £25 for one of his two Ibiza trips a year, so that he can buy a drink at an expensive bar whilst he's out there. Obviously, he wasn't expecting it to blow up, and in fact, he was only expecting to share it with his closed IB for group of friends on Facebook as a bit of a joke. But after being contacted by a Sun newspaper reporter, who gave off the impression of writing up a light-hearted article on the crowdfunder, the whole thing was turned on its head. The campaign due to the Sun and Lad Bible articles, yep, Lad Bible got involved too, ended up earning £170, and the campaign owner is now claiming to give all of the money for this joke campaign to charity. <laughs> so uh, yeah, long story short, don't always believe what you read in the paper, especially if that paper is the sun. One of the most important and influential PC games of all time is getting a documentary, the brilliantly named The Mist documentary. Oh yes, on August the 13th this documentary got funded. Honestly, I actually know very little about the history of this game and the trailer gives off the impression that it actually has a really interesting backstory. It's very well produced by the looks of things and for someone like me that makes in-depth history videos about video game franchises of old, I will indeed be checking this one out as soon as it's available. The very popular Kickstarter code spells that only asked for $50, but instead ended up getting $164,014 back in 2014, was a promising Dungeons & Dragons-esque make-your-own-game-like game, where the creator gave you the tools needed to actually code in the spells and abilities of your character in a three-dimensional world. And although these early videos looked a little bit basic, the idea was actually pretty impressive. Well, that project died, and just basically never got completed. But on the 14th of August this year, the campaign got an update for the first time in almost four years. It turns out development is coming back, and now it needs your help, and you're gonna be funding it again, but this time it's happening over on Patreon. It's an odd idea that actually kind of worked a little. I mean, they have a shade over $100 a month coming in on this now, and of course, a stupid amount of Andrew Backers over on Kickstarter. The whole idea for this is now to be made for the community, by the community, and if you ask me, this is their way of letting down 5,498 backers easily. 
Will it ever get done? I highly doubt it. It's been way too long between updates, literally years. And now, probably 99% of the backers have either completely forgotten about this train wreck or wish they could forget about this train wreck. An absolute joke. Scott Snyder, a guy that should be very familiar to comic book fans out there, is back again creating a brand new comic called Nocturnal. Scott is someone that has worked with DC Comics for many years, most notably on some of the more popular Batman stories. And in this new thriller-esque story, the lead character must fight against monsters in the shadows in a world almost completely overshadowed by darkness. August the 17th was the day that this campaign went live and the concept is actually really interesting. Fans of this sort of thing are already jumping on board as the campaign has completely smashed its goal. If you are a fan, as always, the links can be found in the description. Okay, so on the 17th of August, we got this. I'm just going to play the clip for you. Console cover nation. Today we will be showing you how to apply a console cover. I got one already open, so we'll do that. Change the appearance of your console in seconds. In real time. Done. Thank you for joining us. See you next time. The console cover. Now getting high quality stickers for your gaming console isn't anything new, but VL Harrison here is going down a different route. For this campaign, he literally wants to sell you a PS4 box that will sit on top of your PlayStation 4. Yes, it's literally half a cardboard box that you can already buy on his website for $80 a pop, alongside some trainers, some generic shirts, or a single pizza pan slice. It's all very odd, nothing here makes sense whatsoever. The guy simply sells whatever he thinks will sell, and my guess is that nothing sells. And of course, this gets even weirder when you realize that his website is actually the only place you're going to be able to buy any of this junk, because the Kickstarter page itself has the following tiers. $250 for some stickers, $500 for a cap, $1,000 for a shirt, and of course, $2,500 for a pen. So, go on, what are you waiting for? All of the links are in the description. You want to back this quickly, guys. I don't know what to think about Vscape Studios' Dead Lane game, a survival horror racing game, a game that apparently is a cross between Dead to Daylight and Need for Speed, because it kind of looks like a game of cops and robbers that plays like Motorstorm at night. I mean, there's actually nothing wrong with that. I really enjoyed Motorstorm on the PS3, but um, yeah, I feel like this unique game concept is reaching a little bit here. But hey, I like those games like I said and therefore I would probably like this if it gets funded. Although since August the 18th, it hasn't done all that well. I will indeed be checking this one out if it hits its goal to see if it really is a survival horror racing game, which it claims to be, or just cops and robbers. Regardless, as stated, I'm happy with either outcome. Also on the 18th of August, a very unique uh, campaign made its way onto Kickstarter. Something that you may have actually seen yourself on Facebook due to marketing. And um, yeah, this is incredibly niche. They're going after a very specific type of individual. What type of individual, I hear you ask? The pimple popping individual. Um, not sure what else to say about this, but for $25 you can pop fake gooey blackheads from a silicone oversized yellow nose with your blackhead buddy. Hmm, moving on. Okay, so this one, We Build the Wall, was a campaign that started back in December of 2018 on GoFundMe with the attempt to have the public pay for the border between Mexico and the United States. 
It was wildly successful, mainly due to the crazy amount of press that it got. Plenty of people obviously accused the people behind the campaign of being scammers. In fact, there is actually so much going on with the back end of this ever since it went live that I have actually started writing a script on it a few times and had to completely wipe it and start again. Maybe I'll do that video one day. However, one interesting factoid after this was when Steve Bannon, a former aide to Donald Trump, joined the project to continue on with the Build the Wall vision. But on the 20th of August, after raising $25.6 million from 250,000 donators, everything came to a halt as the Department of Justice put claims forward stating that the people running the campaign used the campaign to siphon thousands of dollars to themselves rather than actually going on building the wall. This of course led to one side of supporters stating that they knew it was a scam all along whilst the other side obviously claiming that it was yet another example of fake news. But the way it looks right now, this is anything but fake news. I don't want to go into detail about this too much because it is still ongoing, but if you guys are interested, as stated, I have managed to collect quite a lot of information on this over the years, and I'm more than happy to create a full rundown on this build wall scam. If you are interested, then please get in touch and let me know. And that's your final political segment in this episode, don't worry. Because on August the 20th, in some much more upbeat news, a brand new Game Boy got funded. Game Boy Game got funded. Where is my body tells the story of a hand looking for his body, Maniac Mansion style -y. Honestly, the game isn't, you know, super appealing to someone like me, but I've got to give respect where it's due. This bad boy hit its goal and then some. And of course, it's being released on a physical cartridge, and I am all about that. And finally, keeping on the 20th of August, here is something you don't see ever. Mech racing. So, <laughs> yes. Not so basically what you have here are these huge machines that crawl along the floor pretty slowly in all fairness on four legs. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Obviously these massive mechanical mechs are incredibly impressive, but the main goal of this campaign is to race them. Regardless, the campaign project was marked as a project we love by Kickstarter and it shot past its goal in only a couple of days. Obviously, all projects have a drop during the middle of their life, but even still, these monsters of a monster campaign will easily be hitting the hundreds of thousands by the time it's over. And with reward tiers like actually being able to drive these things yourself, how can it not? So on the 24th of August, a brand new game found its way onto Kickstarter asking for $25,000 by a very unique individual. Firstly, the game. So I think the game is a way to recreate bad dreams and inner demons. In one shot, you're in a first person shooter scenario, blasting away hundreds of solid white balls falling down a mountain. And in another shot, you're a barbarian looking character in a 3D setting, killing a devil looking character. And in yet another shot, you're driving a cab in a city where you see a dragon like creature fly over the top of you. Chan, the creator, explains in his own words that as an example, if you help kill the mother of a woman who got circumcised, that woman will help you. Everything about this does not make sense. It's a project that's been in development for about two years apparently, and spoiler alert, it's not gonna get funded. Because the chat behind it really is quite odd, constantly calling himself a genius and comparing his IQ to Stephen Hawking, yet he has absolutely no idea how to run a campaign or how to create a game that makes any sense whatsoever. I am a huge fan of quarter arcades. Now, for people that don't know, these are pretty much perfect one quarter size replicas of classic arcade games. I have Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, Gallagher, Galaxian, and the 40th anniversary Pac-Man Cabinet 2. But on the 28th of August, they came back with a Kickstarter that was for something brilliantly unique. The Polybius Quarter Scale Arcade Cab is a new quarter arcade cabinet that will sit alongside all of your existing quarter arcade cabinets and work as a USB hub to play them all. Now, of course, 
Polybius is one of the biggest urban myths to ever come from gaming, about a supposed arcade cabinet that would make the player ill and it was used to collect data for a secret organisation, blah blah blah. It's all crap of course, but still, it's a great story that's been told endless amounts of times on YouTube. The good thing about this is that it doesn't just simply look nice and power your other cabinets, but it also actually plays a looping video that goes all skew whiff and glitchy, further lending itself to the brilliant urban legend. Again, links can be found down below in the description if you are interested, because this one, I highly suggest checking it out. If you don't get it now, you're probably never going to get it. Chessboard of the Soul is the final crazy game I'll be talking about in this episode, which launched on the 28th of August. Now, this is the second attempt to get this game funded, and it looks to basically have nobody at all wanting to fund it. The idea is to mix chess with religious education. Now, obviously believe what you want to believe, but this really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I think the idea is to basically turn what's said from popular passages from the Bible into powers that you can use in the game. Nothing is really very well explained, and when looking at the content creator online, we was able to find a kind of instruction manual that sort of explains how to play it over on Amazon. However, the big problem with this is that it gives you about one paragraph of instructions, then several pages of hardcore Christian writings. One of the stranger game campaigns that I've actually seen in a fair while, and a game that I'm not even sure the creator himself knows how to play. Regardless, it doesn't matter, as it's not going to be hitting its goal. Do you all remember the Sukaden RPG spiritual successor that I brought up last time? Well, that's ended its campaign on the 29th of August, pulling in no less than 3,409,224,050 pounds, which for my American listeners is $4,536,227.55 from 46,307 backers. To say that this was a success is a huge understatement. With all of this extra money, the team are now looking at ways to expand the game's length in some ways, but as of right now, they have completely obliterated their goals and their fans are incredibly happy. They've got a long road ahead of them, and I really do hope that this game comes out and meets everybody's expectations. It's set for release on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC, at some point in 2022. I wish them all the best with the development of this game. And finally, for my recommendation of the month, how could I not bring up ZX Spectrum Next, the second run? The ZX Spectrum Next, a home computer whose first run pulled in nothing but positive reviews from the people that got one, and this has already managed to rake in close to one and a half million pounds. What you have here is basically the official successor to the UK's most popular home computer of the 80s, the ZX Spectrum. This is such a unique and to be fair rather niche product that is getting everything right for the people that want this sort of thing. It's being created by hardcore fans and followers of the ZX Spectrum and it already has one campaign behind it that's hit all of its gold and fulfilled all of its promises. For the most part, this whole campaign is built for people that missed out the first time round, like me. And so far it looks like it could possibly double the amount of backers that it got last time, which is nothing but a positive in my eyes. It was designed by the original designer, it has all of the features that the original campaign had, plus all of the added stuff since then, it has the next Dizzy game coming out for it. Seriously, if you're interested in the home computer market of Europe, then this is easily your best option to actually discover what you missed out on, or if you did live in Europe, to relive those classic moments as well as experience plenty of new ones. I am indeed a backer of this project and I can't wait to start tinkering around with the ZX Spectrum next, finally. And there you have it guys, that's my news roundup on crowdfunding sites for the month of August 2020. 
I'm still trying to get this uh, news formula down and I hope you guys have seen the improvements over the months. Um, I've really pushed myself this time trying to get more content on here, but talking about them for less amount of time. Uh, 20 campaigns I think I spoke about this week, which is pretty insane. Uh, 10 good, 10 bad, well, you know, scammy, that sort of thing. Let me know your feedback down below and let me know if you guys are still enjoying this formula. I'm even thinking on turning it into a podcast, yes. But anyway, anyway, as usual, a massive shout out to all of my Kick Scammer Detective Agency over on my Discord. You guys can go sign up for free, completely for free. I'm going to be a patron or anything like that. Always a good place to share your Kickstarter disaster story and get some feedback from other members of the Kick Scammer Detective Agency. And of course, for this episode, I want to give an extra big shout out to Nightwill. I want to give an extra big shout out to Monster Smashing on a Keyboard. Both these guys have helped out tremendously for this month. And of course, another big shout out goes to the shitty Kickstarters subreddit. Next up, I've got a proper Kick Scammer episode I'm putting out and an exclusive one for Patreons and YouTube members, so keep an eye out on that one. But for now, I think that's enough rambling, isn't it? Yes, this is DJ Slope signing out, and hopefully, I'll see you all next time.